Today's lesson, we're going to offer work solutions to three advanced placement free response questions on balance of payments and exchange rates. Pause the video here and read the first question before we get into our first worked solution. The first question asks about an increase in the exchange rate of the euro against the Singapore dollar from 0.58 Singapore dollars per euro to 0.6 Singapore dollars per euro. In the beginning, we're asked to explain the impact that this will have on aggregate demand in Singapore. Here you can see that the increase in the euro exchange rate will cause the demand for Singapore goods to go up since they appear cheaper to European consumers. Hence net exports in Singapore will rise and since net exports is a component of aggregate demand, Singapore's aggregate demand will increase. What will happen to the level of employment in Singapore? Because AD increases, there will be more demand for Singapore goods, therefore there will be more need for labor in Singapore. This will cause employment in Singapore to rise to meet the growing demand from the European consumers for the now relatively cheaper Singapore goods. So the next question asks us to suppose what happens if the Singapore Central Bank wants to return its exchange rate to 0.58 Singapore dollars per euro. Should the central bank buy or sell euros? The central bank essentially wants to devalue the euro once again, since the euro was too strong in its opinion. Therefore, the central bank should sell euros in the forex market, increasing its supply and reducing the exchange rate. Now, what if the central bank wanted to use monetary policy instead of intervention? The central bank would essentially want to strengthen the Singapore dollar to bring it back to a stronger exchange rate against the euro. Therefore, the central bank would need to raise interest rates for which it must sell government bonds on the open market, reducing the supply of money in Singapore, raising the Singaporean interest rate, attracting investors to Singapore, causing the Singapore dollar to appreciate. Here we can see the supply of money will fall, increase in interest rates, increase in the demand for Singapore dollars, and bringing the exchange rate back up to a level that it was before. So pause the video here, look over the answers to these questions, rewind, listen to the explanation again if you need to. In the next question, we're asked to examine the two sub-accounts in the balance of payments. We're given two scenarios. The first one says a United States resident buys chocolate from Belgium. Which account will this be measured in, the current account or the financial account? Now chocolate is clearly a consumer good. Therefore, an exchange of consumer goods between countries is measured in the country's current accounts. The next one, however, tries to trick us. It says that an American manufacturer buys computer equipment from Japan. Now, computer equipment is capital equipment, but it is a finished good. Therefore, it is again measured in the current account. The next question, how would an increase in real incomes in the U.S. affect U.S. current account balance? As U.S. incomes rise, the demand for imports in the United States will rise, since Americans have more disposable income to spend. The increase in imports will reduce America's net exports, causing America's current account balance to move towards deficit. So this is a commonly asked question in the AP. As incomes rise in a particular nation, that nation's consumers buy more imports, moving its current account into or towards deficit. Part C asks us to use a forex market to show the effect on the US dollar in India if American firms increase their investment activity in India. So we're going to draw a market for the US dollar in India showing the rupee value of the dollar. We've got the supply of dollars and the demand for dollars and the original equilibrium exchange rate of the dollar in India. Now if American firms invest more in the Indian economy, this will lead to an inflow of US dollars into the Indian economy. The US dollar becomes less scarce and therefore the exchange rate falls. So US investment in India will increase the supply of US dollars causing the exchange rate to fall. The US dollar essentially becomes weaker due to the increased investment in the Indian economy. So pause the video here, look over the solution to number two and rewind if you need to, to listen to the explanation again. Next, we're gonna move on to number three. Number three asks us to assume that the real interest rates in the US and Europe begin at 4.5%, but then the US interest rate falls to 3.75%. How will this affect the financial flow between these countries? Due to lower interest rates in the United States, capital is going to flow out of the US and into Europe since European banks are now offering higher interest rates. Savers who can save in either US banks or European banks will demand more savings in Europe. Therefore, there will be greater investment in Europe 
financial capital will flow into Europe. Use a correctly labeled graph to show the effect that this has on the value of the euro against the dollar in a flexible exchange rate system. So here we're looking at the dollar price of euros, the supply of euros, and the demand for euros. Originally, the exchange rate would be ER1, but now that interest rates are relatively higher, demand for euros will rise as international savers wish to save more in the European economy, causing the exchange rate of the euro to rise. So the determinant of exchange rates this question refers to is relative interest rates. If interest rates are relatively higher in Europe than they are in the US, there will be demand for financial investment in Europe, i.e. savings. People will wish to save their money where interest rates are highest. So the demand for that country's currency will rise, causing it to appreciate. The last question says, explain how the change in the value of the euro will affect European Union's net exports. Now we've just described a shift towards surplus in Europe's financial account. Naturally, this will lead to a shift towards deficit in the current account. The stronger euro will make European goods less attractive to American consumers, causing Europe's exports to fall. Therefore, Europe's, Europe's net exports will fall and the trade balance will move towards deficit. So that wraps up the third answer. Pause the video, look over the solution, rewind, listen to the explanation. We'll have one more quick look at numbers two and numbers one. Pause the video anywhere you need to to review these answers. These are just two of the several free response questions available on balance of payments and exchange rates from the College Board. I'm just sitting in by myself,